Wafak, thanks so much for being with us and many congratulations on your Forbes CIO Next List uh, um, honoree, the fact you are one. Um, tell us a little bit about Zoetis. I mean, it's kind of like a fairly unknown company, but a massive company. I can't remember what its market cap is, something huge, but tell us a little bit about it and basically your role within it. Thank you, Martin, and I'm humbled for the, the nomination, the, 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 the CIO Next. Uh, if you have a pet, if you drink milk, eat eggs, or any meat, we are in your house and we care for you, we care for your pets, we care for the vets who take care of the, the pets or the livestock. So that's who we are. We are a global leader in animal health. Uh, we have a legacy of about 70 years, seven zero years uh, of innovation in uh, drugs, vaccines, diagnostics and technologies that help veterinarians take care of animals and take care of the pet owners or the pet parents uh, in our companion animal business. We commercialize in about 100 countries and uh, we uh, have been again around for about 70 years with a culture driven in innovation, customer obsession, doing the right thing, our colleagues make the difference. Those are our core values, and we do that with, with pride. Wow, that's incredible. And what, what kind of scale is the business I mean, in terms of revenues? I mean, what, what So we're uh, above 7 billion revenue, uh, and with double digit high uh, growth uh, company uh, over the, the last few years, and we expect that for the next years. That's great. And how long have you been at the company? I have been at the company for two and a half years. So I joined Zoetis about five weeks before COVID hit. And I had the opportunity during those five weeks to meet uh, the executive team, spend time with, uh, with, with the board, that's one board meeting, do one customer visit, meet my team and a few others, do a call center visit, and that was it. After that, I stayed home. Uh, and But those two and a half years feel like they've been a decade because they are COVID years. I'm sure they count for more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they do. That's a great way of looking at it. Um, and, and in those two and a half years, you've done some remarkable work. Um, in particular, you've kind of driven a strategy of div digital platforms at Zoetis. Can you just talk us through that? I mean, how has that worked? Yeah, no, it's been a phenomenal journey and, and great pace uh, of execution, in fact, and strategy. Uh, we, we have a first, uh, our technology and digital strategy is value-based driven. So, and we play with the words here. So the V is about making sure we focus on customer experience and, and value-driven uh, opportunities to improve the customer experience and the colleague experience. The A is about analytics driven and embedded everywhere. The L is leading edge platforms, and I'll get, I'll get back to it. The U is about unmatched teams and inclusive teams uh, and culture. And we, th we think about teams as internal and external, as our partners, they're part of our teams, internal to Zoetis and external as our strategic partners. And the E is very critical, it's about enterprise-wide compliance and, of course, cyber vigilance and resilience. So back to the L, uh, that, that's your question. So leading edge platforms, we uh, bet on a data and digital platform that we've been building uh, at a very fast pace. And what that means, it's very simple. Everything we do because it's value driven, it's use case driven. So we do things because there is a reason we're doing that to create value for the enterprise, for the colleagues or for the customers. But anything we do, we do that with strategic lens and execution with the pace we're needing. So we built a data platform and a digital platform that allows us to make data available to our internal core operations when we are digitizing, automating, or enhancing those or embedding analytics in them, as well as to deliver our digital products to the customers. So everything is done once, built once to use many with an architecture towards the future, but use case driven so that the value is captured and empowered with the pace that's needed for the business. That's great. Can you give an example or a couple of examples of, of things that have been made possible by that platform, yeah, that platform approach? Yeah, I'll give one example, which is about improving our colleague experience and giving them insights in our sales operations. So uh, we built Next Generation Sales Engine. It's a program that powers our 
colleagues and gives them in facing customers with insights about customers. So what's the next best action? That's, that's how we, we talk about it in the marketplace. Uh, what are the insights about the customer and what would be valuable for this customer versus other? It's based on analytics, that's and the data that's available, so that's all embedded in the data platform. And every time we have a new use case or new capability to deliver, we build it again for that use case. So how do we power uh, next best action? How do we make sure that we understand what products are offering for those customers? How do we make sure that we, 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 we take the, the right actions in the field? But we're doing it again once for many. So as an example of the value that's by which we enabled fast our US operations, now we're in the process of deploying that and scaling to Australia, Japan, Canada, and many more markets. And because we built it in a platform thinking and modular enough and open enough, scaling is happening with very high pace and agility. Well, of course, we have to adjust to the reality of the Australian market, but anything that can be reused is done once, and we take it from the US to do Australia. So Australia is about to go live uh, these days, then Japan uh, shortly after that, Canada, and then after that, we are preparing for other waves in our interna international operations. So That's pace fantastic. and speed oh. for the US. So every almost few weeks, we have right. new iterations for our US market. We did it for our pet care, our companion animal division. Then we could deploy it as well for our diagnostics fast. Got it. Because we built it in a platform uh, approach. I, I love that. So, I mean, clearly when we're talking about digital transformation, you know, creating the platforms that allow that transformation to take place is really important. But the, the kind of other side of the coin is getting people ready um, yes. for the change. Uh, I know you have a, a digital fluency for all, yes. I think you call it. I mean, did that come out? So that's training for everybody across the company. Yes. But it, it was born in, in the IT department, right? Absolutely. It was born, and the way we've done the digital strategy from the beginning. We've never ta thought about IT and we call our, our organizations OIT oh, Tech and Digital. We renamed the organization, Words Matter, uh, and we renamed it to make sure that we, 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 we claim and we own and we drive the cultural change needed in my own organization. But we never do anything for ZTD. That's how we call ourselves. It's always enterprise-wide. Whatever we do, it's business outcomes driven and whatever makes sense to be done for, for the enterprise, we do it for the enterprise. But we go use case by use case. So uh, we deployed, in fact, digital fluency for the enterprise. So it's available for the full enterprise because we believe that changing the culture, making sure that we have the learning mindset, it's more than just the skills we're teaching them or the capabilities we're giving them. I am a strong believer of growth mindset drives value. If all of us continue to learn and have that intellectual curiosity or intellectual vitality, then we all win because we're never going to be uh, satisfied with what we have. So we deployed a digital fluency uh, is platform. That a it's a training program. It's a, it's a training a program. Of, okay. It's a set. Of, it's a platform that has. We focus okay. again. We believe we're strategic and we act with speed. So instead of deploying a thousand of programs, we chose four areas. Okay. Artificial intelligence or, or data insight, agility or different ways of working, cloud and cyber. And in these four areas, there are four kind of uh, vectors, and the modules are very small, microbytes, and anyone in the company, it, mm. we made it as a pull, a pull versus a push. That was a strategic decision right. from the executive team, and the uptake was phenomenal. Uh, agile no surprise, was the most uh, wanted and demystify agile. What does it mean? The world's and aligned, then a uh, lot of data science. So that's one of uh, the things we did. We as well deployed a program where we uh, assigned the reverse mentors to our executive team. People don't watch what we say, they watch what we do. So mm. we have uh, reverse mentors assigned to our executive team and it's their, it. it's their relationship, they do whatever they learn and they're mentors from my organization of different levels. Uh, we have as well a uh, community of practices so for software engineering for data science across the enterprise again. So again, we, we think strategically, but we act with speed, agility as well. And we adapt. So there are things we're doing now we didn't know we're going to do three months I ago. But we get feedback from people. Whatever That's works, great. we just go and do it and make do it Do you happen. have a mentor too? I do have a mentor. And one of my goals, as a matter of fact, so I say to everyone so that people hold me accountable. So yeah. Martin, do that too. My goal for this year is to code an NFT. 
And I don't want to use just a low-code platform. I want to use really coding NFT. I am not doing well now because I haven't started, but <laughs> I will be done by the end of the year. Hold me to it. I'm going to hold you to that. Yeah. That's wonderful. <laughs> Just to finish, what's one thing that's coming around the corner that you're excited about? Could be anything, could be a, an emerging technology, a business trend, but something you say, wow, look, that's really exciting to me. Yeah, I am extremely excited about something that's not, I can give you a hundred things technology-wide, mm. but I'm going to give you something about the culture. I'm really excited about the world we're all creating, and we don't know what the answers are about the new ways of working about how we can uh, do more of asynchronous work, about how we can leave and let people be and have that, we call it empowered flexibility at Zoetis, let people work at their uh, pace and, and, and have them fulfill their family duties while as well doing work. How do we balance where we need people to be together versus where we go and attract the talent wherever they are and allow them to work and trust them to work at their pace. I'm very excited about the art of the possible created for society, for businesses, for talent, for allowing diverse candidates to do better uh, than what they've done in the past. I don't know the, uh, the answer. We're trying and, and learning from so many things, but I'm extremely excited having been a mom myself who struggled with work and, and, and not being sometimes with my kids where I wanted to be, uh, to be more. So we have a role and a duty to play that. So reimagining that world uh, is something that excites me a lot. I know technology will play a role there. Culture, mindset, leadership behaviors will play maybe a more critical role than technology. Well, for that's fantastic. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Martin, for the time.